Hello there people, I am Michael from Artillery and you're watching The Metal Boys. <laughs> this is Neil Turpin with Death Riders, Bleed the Hunger and Fronting Onslaught to fill in for Psy Killer. And you're watching The Metal Boys! <laughs> Welcome to the Metal Voice. Today, oh man, it's a thrashing show. We have Artillery, we have Onslaught, and of course we have Mr. Neil Turbin. Guys, tell me tell me about the tour. How's it coming along so far? Amazing. Yeah, really great. Uh, the first time for Artillery to, to tour in the US, so it's uh, been a real huge experience and a great honor too, because uh, to travel with you know, a band like Onslaught and obviously a, a renowned singer as, uh, as Neil Turbin is a huge honor. So we're just very delighted and uh, happy about the whole situation. So a lot of miles to travel, but a whole lot more experiences and, and great times to have, yeah? Yeah, and I just have to add that, um, you know, it's a pleasure to, to tour with Michael. Um, you know, he's an amazing singer and, you know, just takes the artillery brand and lifts it up to the next level. I mean, it's a, it's a tremendously amazing band, kicking ass every night, hearing you sing is just, you know, a, a, a treat and a, an experience. I mean, definitely uh, one of the best singers out there and, you know, in the business. And to hear artillery plays is a, a pleasure every night. And to play with Onslaught, of course, a great honor for me. And, you know, filling in for Kasai Keeler is, uh, you know, something that I feel, you know, it's an, uh, an honor and an opportunity as well to, to help the band. Okay, Michael, I have one question for you. Have you ever met King Diamond? I know you're Danish. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever met King Diamond? No, I haven't. I'm afraid. Yeah, I've met King. You met King? He's a great guy. Yeah. I actually have um, Matt Thompson from King Diamond playing on Death Riders yes, yes. CD, but, and Matt, you know, is just a, a really super person, really amazing drummer, as I think yep, everyone yep. knows by now. And, um, you know, that's a great honor to have him playing with us. But as far, you know, on the album, but as far as King, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I saw King back at the Beacon Theater in New York with Mickey D on drums. This is oh, like Mickey. going way back. But he yeah, was yeah. he was a friendly guy, you know, he was like someone that you could talk to and was totally cool and he had that leg bone or whatever it was, and <laughs> human, human bones and, you know, just really cool people. I mean, it reminds me a lot of Lemmy. It's, it's just someone that was totally, you know, very well-mannered, you know, very uh, down to earth and just a super personality. A lot of people have been giving you five star <laughs> ratings on your vocal performance on the last album, you know, Legions. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that's probably, you, you rejuvenated the band. Who are your influences? Well, a whole lot of people, but uh, obviously Ronnie James Dio. Uh, yeah, the master. Yes, I mean, you cannot avoid him. And I mean, Bruce Dickinson, um, Ian Gillen, uh, uh, actually also a guy like uh, Mike Patton, because he's like, and-, and, and Versatile. And, yeah, very versatile. And um, yeah, I mean, oh, a lot of people, I even listen to, to, to yeah, Lemmy and, and, and people like that because there's something about to sing a song like Johnny Cash, stuff yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. because uh, he does something that makes you want to hear what he says and okay. I'm trying in my own way to acquire that, but uh, I'm just trying to, to, to bring everything I got to the plate, I mean... Uh, it, you know, music, uh, vocal influences. You know, I really like great singers, so I like Glenn Hughes, I like, you know, Paul Rogers, because they're finesse singers. I like Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. I like, um, you know, I can give you a list and keep going, but I won't. But there's just so many amazing singers that actually sing. Yeah. And I think that's an art form that's kind of lost with all the digital age of information technology. You know, there's abilities to sample things and. plan is later on this year or maybe early next year to re-record that album. It's a great idea. Yeah. It's a All right. and so that's where the, the band is going, right? To yeah, I mean, either I'd write new material or re-record that old well, album. We're recording new material for sure. Um, my, my way of thinking at the moment what I'm talking with the label about is releasing the In Search of Sanity album re-recorded as a bonus album with the next new album. Death metal vocals. Yeah. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on this? A band like Into Eternity. Yes. I think that's a really good example of kind of yes. right on the fringe of death metal and thrash metal and progressive. You know, they're kind of right there. So I, I can appreciate that. But when it comes to 
you know, when, when it's totally just barking. Pit bulls, man, they don't yeah. fucking, they, they eat dog food and you don't I have could, to get them a hotel room. It's Michael, awesome. The, Michael O'Neill, the only analogy I have for death metal vocals, I mean, we're talking about pure death metal vocals, right, right, yeah. right, 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 is, is, is playing a guitar with one string. At least in my opinion. I mean, yeah. it, it, but, but what are you, what's your opinion? Well, I don't know, because I think there's a, a difference between some bands, and I mean, there's like the, the obvious stereotyping of just doing like that, but I think like... Pinky Monster. Yeah, perhaps if you could, yeah, if you will, but I think like a band like Mobile Angel, uh, obviously I think, that, and uh, also Shakrath from Dimo Borgia and stuff like, guys like that, they, they have a more variety to what they do. And I think that if you can use it in some way that makes it dramatic and in, in, in the, and you know puts you know some force behind the style that you want to do, then it, I think it, it you can do it and uh, and I will also listen to it. But if it just gets redundant, like being you know just being brutal, it's for being brutal or doing this almost piggy voice once in a while. I mean, for those who want to do it, cool. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I don't, for sure. I don't want to put anyone down of anything. Let's change topics right now. We're going to go to illegal downloading. Has it helped or hurt artillery? Has it helped or hurt Death Riders or Onslaught or all the bands that you participated in? I'll let Mike start with Mike. jump on that one. All right, then. Uh, well, it's a tough question, actually. But obviously, the music industry is uh, hollowed out now these days. I mean, there's no money there, really. You have yeah. to tour to make money. You don't make money out of records anymore. And... Um, as far as illegal downloading goes, I think that's a, it's a reaction because um, back in the day when the CD was uh, you know brought forth, the prices were very high because they said, oh, like this is a new platform, we have to introduce something new." But when the production prices went down, they kept the prices high for the people, you know. And so, why want to spend so much money on something that you you know can yeah. get easily in some other way? Uh, and they, they may they may have mismanaged the whole Napster thing in the back of the day. You find that there's more of a reach globally for artillery where you couldn't get that before because of the illegal downloading? Or is it just, you know, the bottom line is the bottom line? Um, we must uh, face the, the future or the it now. It is what it is, right? Yes. And so you I must say it's what you can from it, right? Yeah, so it, it, it might be good. Yeah, yeah, I would say. Neil, okay, you're a vet. I mean, you've seen the industry from the days when the major <laughs> labels used to rip people off to now where the consumers are in a sense ripping bands off. I mean, wh what's your take on illegal downloading? And you know, we just came from a really nice restaurant here in um, Montreal. So when we went to that restaurant, you know, would it be cool if they, we just went there and said, hey, you know, can, can we get in free and can we just yeah. have a free t-shirt? And can we also get a VIP and can we also have, you know, free food and can you give us some free drinks? And we're not gonna tip you and we're not gonna pay anything because we should have it for free. Because yeah. why should we pay for any downloading? Why should we have, can, can't we just have your album for free? Can't we have everything for free? I mean, that's the mentality that's out there. <coughs> I mean, you can't walk into a hotel and get a free room Absolutely just not. saying, hey, I want it for free or, or a restaurant. But people do expect to get free CDs. They, they figure they can just download it. They figure they can just go to, you know, can you get me f into your concert for free? Well, yeah. you know, this is the way musicians, artists make money. They get paid by working and their work is the music and creation of music and also yeah. you know the artistry so I think that it's an unfortunate circumstance and I think I won't brush it under the carpet or, or sugarcoat it by saying it's okay no it's not okay but the people who ruined it are the architects of the internet that's right there is no there is no code lock <coughs> on on the download in other words they, they didn't invent it where there was some type of code in the download so you'd have to unlock it now there are some types of, of, of downloads that are out there that have like a, a water password. Yeah, yeah. You got to unlock it. You can't just grab it. So sure, there's a way to do that. If they didn't want you to have it for free, then they wouldn't have done it that way. So I think it's by design. There's a reason for it. There's usually a reason for everything, even if we don't understand what that is. Yeah. Last comments, Michael? What do you want to tell all your fans out there? Well, just a you know, huge thank you for all your support and all your help and uh, staying true with us. and. Um, yeah, just being there and being so supportive and uh, writing such nice uh, messages to us and uh, yeah, keeping the metal alive and the enthusiasm and uh, all the good spirit and stuff. So, thank you very much. And uh, by the way, King Diamond, please call me. I want that coffee, you know. <laughs> I spoke to King Diamond just recently. Oh, yeah? Oh. But I didn't speak to him in person. It was a Skype. Oh, nice. Neil, closing remarks. Uh, this is an awesome experience for me. You know, this is the longest tour I've done. With with uh, you know band with onslaught I mean there's yeah, yeah, yeah. forty about forty days for going over next back to the U S and then back to Canada again 
So we're going all across Canada. We're playing, you know, places that I've played before and also ones that I have. I'm going back to uh, Brazil, wow. the Chile with, with artillery and onslaught. Nice. It's amazing. Um, I can't say enough good things about artillery and Michael. I mean, if you haven't heard their music and you haven't heard Michael sing, I mean, you've got to because it's... Michael's uh, great. I, I, I will vouch singer. for Michael. He's, sing he's a great <laughs> singer. He's, he's, Great, great vocalist. I mean, very melodic as well as heavy and you know, hits <coughs> notes and, you know, commands it on stage. I mean, you know, I, I love his singing. It's, it's, it's just awesome. And great people, you know. It's nice to be on, on tour with people that, you know, we're a good little team and family together. So, cool. you know, we sit down at the table and have some food and just, you know, chit-chat about stuff and, you know, all kinds of stuff. It's fun. <laughs> I mean, that's what it should be. Neil, you're like a regular on the show right now. I guess. <laughs> I should open a beer and we should just have one, right? Yeah. And everyone right. out there, too. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching The Metal Voice. We'll catch you next time. Here's a very interesting tidbit that I found out. You're not, you're, your real name is actually Nige Rocket. At first I thought this was a stage name. No, no. This is your official name, Rocket. Yeah, that's my uh, real name, and I've just showed this gentleman my passport <laughs> as, as uh, evidence. So, yeah, I was, uh, I was born a rocket.